Ladies and gentlemen, in Zoom land, I would like to welcome Preston Combs. He is the owner of Preston's Putting, 2021 Golf Digest Best Young Teacher, 2018 SCBJ Teacher of the Year from the Northern Chapter. And uh, I'm going to let you get in. I know that our time, unfortunately, is compressed on these things, and you, you do these things in larger time spans normally. So I'm going to pass the mic, close the video, and look forward to hearing your presentation, sir. Perfect. We'll get a screen share going up here, get a little confirmation from you that you can see me. Gotcha. And look good, sound good? I can see it. Looks good. All right. Fantastic. Well, that said, then we will uh, get started right here. So Josh, thank you for the introduction. So a little background for uh, me is Josh already ran some of the accolades. I've been the owner of Preston's Putting for some years now based out in uh, Santa Barbara. And then a wonderful opportunity today to share some information about helping the junior golfer improve their putting. And for a part of the game that players otherwise consider boring and something that is just not exciting when the ball doesn't go in the air, we need to find ways to help cultivate the proper pathway for our competitive juniors to see improvement and make sure that our newer golfers have the proper foundation and understanding of those skills. So today, as we get into coaching putting for the junior golfer, we want to answer, where do we start? And if nothing else from today, I hope that everybody leaves with some kind of framework for what really is important when it comes to putting, especially as a junior in this, in some cases, highly competitive game and arena for our players here. And that starts with identifying a problem and recognizing where do, where do we start here? Because that problem could be any number of things. And I think the first problem that we run into with our junior golfers is this right here, our very 21st century thing called TikTok or Instagram or YouTube. Heck, just the phone in general, right? They have access to so much information now and it's at their fingertips. We need to be able to better manage for them what's relevant, what's irrelevant, what's bad information, what's good information, just not at the right time and helping them figure out how are we going to handle this process more effectively for them. So we have one problem and don't forget the other problem too that thing called the easy way out. I don't know if anybody here has Googled fix my putting, but I took it upon myself to do that it's some time ago. And I was appalled at the number of things that popped up, whether they be videos, articles. And this one here from a popular magazine really hit home for me because of the big red box on the left-hand side there. Give me one thing. Everybody wants this one thing, this one quick fix. Give me a drill, give me a tip. When the reality of the situation is that putting is so much more than that. The same way we wouldn't think that there's one thing for our juniors golf swing, there probably isn't just one thing for their putting. And if it's just distance and direction, I think we need to do even a little bit better than that still. So today I'd like to share with you a real solution for these very real problems that we as coaches face outlining a coaching process. Now, I'd like to say that I did a lot of extensive research and reading of PhD papers to say, well, so-and-so's research and studies have really given us this idea that we should follow things in this order. This idea of create, develop, and own the tagline for Preston's putting are based on my experiences, the stuff that I have dug up in the trenches of our day-to-day -day coaching, whether it be camps, clinics, private lessons, high-end juniors with top rankings. There's a lot of things to sift through, and I think as I continue to look back at the commonalities and the traits, it comes down to these three points that we'll talk about a little bit more here today. Beginning with create, the first step in the process that begins with an understanding of what is it that am I supposed to do and how can I better create that framework for our junior golfers here? What is it that we're supposed to understand? Well, we need to understand the problems that we just talked about, but not that one. We've got this other one, this information that we have access to. Take the breakout is something that I hear a lot from our players. And this example of Jordan Spieth here with his par putt at Colonial is one of those key examples here. Do our junior golfers understand the importance of speed as we hit a putt coming up to the hole here? 
we've got a four foot par putt that goes three feet by a three foot bogey putt that also goes three feet by. Now, I'm not going to say that his strategy was necessarily take the breakout, but we should under have create an understanding for our juniors that just because you're close to the hole doesn't mean we get to try to mash everything into the back of the cup. So we need to figure out, okay, how are we going to change that? Because if they read this little tweet here on Twitter, at so-and-so school, we work hard on when to be aggressive and when to diet at the hole. And most of this depends on the player's ability, but generally eight feet and in, let it rip. I can imagine junior golfers and what their definition of let it rip is versus creating a functional understanding of capture speed. This idea that nine to 25 feet, they need to be passive because, well, whatever that means, and outside of 25 feet diet all the way, it's like, okay, they want to diet near the cup, sure, but what are my acceptable tolerances when I'm outside of 20 feet? What is close enough to say that was a good job? Listen, I know as we look at the data in this tweet, 2020 was a rough year for everybody in some capacity here, but we need to stop making decisions based on bad information. And this is the stuff that you as coaches, whether you be PGA members, high school coaches, or parents in general, these are the things that you're going to have to combat on a regular basis because that information is so readily available here. So what, is, what can we do as far as framework? What can we do to better craft the picture of what makes a ball go in? This concept of the putting tree inspired by my mentor, David Orr, and uh, David and Phil Kenyon put together the deterministic model for the very scientific and very accurate details of what makes a ball go in when we putt. And I looked at it and being the nerd that I am, I really like it, but part of me realized my juniors aren't going to understand that. My amateurs, my competitive professional golfers won't understand everything on that tree to the nth degree to make it practical. Let me recraft this idea in terms where we can say, here are our starting points. Understanding that the first thing I do when I step on a putting green is read. Understanding that speed is going to be my concept of how am I going to get the ball to the cup based on that quality read that I've come up with. And then direction, the execution, how am I going to get the ball started in that direction? And helping players recognize that if I have this framework in place, at least I'm paying attention to relevant things. People might always say, well, what about aim? What about grip? What about posture? And at the end of the day, those are influencers. We need to look at this and go, there are a lot of different ways to hold the putter, a lot of different ways to stand, some functional, some not. Somebody once criticized my Instagram account saying you try to make everybody look the same. I said, no, we're just trying to find what's functional for somebody. You know, there was the idea that I have a vendetta against left hand low. I said, well, somebody should probably show me that they're really good at speed before I say that I, I want to change something like that. And if they can't show me that, then it's time to look at other avenues, make sure that we're not introducing a ceiling for success. But everything that we do in the studio is built around one of these three topics. It needs to be very proactive in improving one of these skill sets. So we're gonna take a look at a real world example here and listen into our, um, listen into our video here on the left-hand side that's playing. We've got a junior golfer with about a 17 foot putt here. How do you feel about that delivery speed to the cup down there? Too fast? Okay. What are you going to do to change that on the next one? Probably just short at the show. And the video cuts. Did everybody hear what he said? I'm just going to shorten up the stroke. Take a look at the right hand side here. And somebody please identify for me if we are in fact shortening up the stroke anymore to try to hit the 17 foot or the proper speed. And if so, what are we going to do when we have a five foot putt or a six foot putt? There's just no way to make the stroke any smaller. So this next slide here, we're going to take a look at how I was able to create an understanding for this player and get them to have that discussion here. So what else is there then that I might be able to do in order to manage those pieces? It's like, well, if I could determine what size is appropriate for any distance cut based on my tempo, I'd probably be a little bit better off. Agree? Would I teach somebody? No. Short and fast? Why not? Why would I teach Actually, hold on, hold on. Well, depends what's what other point yourself. Like, 
Okay. So a lot of this is depends on what's comfortable. Their internal clock, right? Yes. Would you say SNEDS is on the fast side of things then? Yes. Yeah. Probably not ideal though to have somebody learn based on the outline, right? Yeah, I would say not. not. There's like all of a sudden it might be a little harder to own some essential skill set. So maybe we want to keep something neutral, but not define it as a here's the number it's got to be, right? So if we could determine that for you, maybe we can solve why it accidentally goes six feet by or comes up three feet short on a 15 footer every now and again. I think I will take the uh, Okay, good, me too. I think you probably would hear that today. Yeah. Make sense? Yes, it does. So we took that opportunity in this discussion to create an understanding of what are possible strategies here in order to change a given result, find a better way to do things, build a better mousetrap, I think is the phrase. But these discussions for me are very specific in the verbiage and the words chosen because it, we want to shed light on the incompetency of I'm trying to do things this way. Now, you only do half the job though if you shed the light on the incompetency, but don't develop opportunities to build those skills, provide the pathway to create a solution here. So as we shift from the creating the understanding to the development phase, we want to give players a process for, as we continue down this road of looking at speed here in particular, what can I do to develop the skills and the awareness and the technique components to create better results here? Part of those developing the skills here can best be described as we take a full swing example here for everyone listening. Does everyone here know how far their sand wedge goes? Give or take, we don't need an exact number down to the yard, but we should all as golfers have a rough idea about that. And then we have an idea of about how far a three quarter sand wedge goes. Yeah, it's a little shoulder shoulder shot, right? It's a chippy wedge. We kind of know about what, how far that goes and what we should do with it. But then I asked juniors the question, how far does putter go? And there's silence because, well, it doesn't have a set job. It doesn't have a particular distance to do. It needs a lot of adaptability. We need to be able to vary certain components that we worked on and shed some light on for our player in the previous slide about the size of stroke and making sure that there's a tempo to match that. One exercise that I shared in uh, Golf Digest back in January and is posted on the blog on my website under the title Beyond the Magazine talked about what can we do to set some framework for the player to recognize the size of my backswing and follow through might need to match and at least that gives me a starting point so I'm not trying to change multiple variables to get the ball to go a different distance. If we start getting two proactive and changing both size and tempo, the structure, the foundation becomes very unstable to manage an otherwise important skill in putting. So as we go through this process here for our player on the left, we'll see his first set. We can identify with those darts there that we tried to create a given size of stroke for him to work off of. And we can see that we're marking with ball markers the dispersion for where all of these golf balls stop. And we're kind of disappointed with this last putt here in particular. It's a kind of spread of pretty far away from the others. So we have a discussion about how do we improve this skill set as we start developing it here? What are some better ways? And something that's evidently different in our second set for our video on the right-hand side would be the routine the player's implementing. He's got relevant practice strokes because he's trying to replicate a given size that's directly applies to the result for this next putt here. Useful. Yep. And he starts recognizing, gee, I might be able to get these balls to stop like in the same spot a little bit more often here because I'm implementing that routine. And we end up with a finished product here that is evidently different from where we started the day because we took the time to create an understanding of what determines how far the golf ball goes. We took the time to develop those skills here. And now we can properly match size and tempo. Now I won't say we solved all our problems with just size and tempo. We had some other things that we needed to do in our work here. We did change some of the mechanics that set up. We did change some of the address pieces. We did change distance from the ball. 
a lot of other technique pieces that we can get into on a different day. But at least this player, if I never see him again, has an understanding of what do I need to do to get the ball to stop near the cup more often? How do I adapt to different distances? And then here are the steps that I need to take in order to develop that skill set. Then the next phase of, aware of the development piece, awareness. Our junior golfer on the left-hand side here, and we've all seen it. Hey, we've got it fixed. We know what we're doing here as far as the setup and the posture and the technique goes. And then we get the video on the right-hand side a week later. Yeah, that putting stuff you did with me doesn't work so great. Well, we need to have evidence of where we left it and where we are. So a week later, we see this setup video piece here and we go, hmm, that looks different in my mind. But the player asked me, why are you showing me this? And I took some time to draw some very fancy 2D lines here. Please work with what you have as far as technology goes, but sometimes 2D drawings might be the best way to convey a message to our junior. And I got a very profound response after my little artwork. Oh, now I see. Now I recognize it's different. Players struggle with developing awareness because they don't really recognize the importance of some pieces or if something deteriorates slowly over time, we need to provide them a pathway. So as much as that phone is a terrible tool for gathering information and relying on a variety of different sources, we want players to be able to use the phone effectively. We want them to say, yeah, put your phone on your tripod, film from face on, film from down the line, play detective, and make sure that as we go through this coaching process, we understand the value of certain pieces here that, oh, well, I can solve setup stuff on my own. I just need to make sure the pictures look similar, that I'm not allowed to have five degrees of ad loft of the shafted address, that I'm not allowed to extend the arms and go back to making a triangle at address. I need to make sure that I have the proper structure. And you can do that for any part of the game, not just putting. There's no reason for a junior to start standing too close or too far away from any given chip shot, wedge, full swing, utilizing the phone and the camera properly to help them develop those awarenesses is important here. Once we've kind of created that understanding, develop the skills, the awareness, and the technique that's a little more nitty gritty for a different day, we get to the final phase of this coaching process, the ownership. I got a picture of my friend's Camaro here because I like the tail lights on it and actually a fitting name for the little story here. I was at a conference down in, gosh, I think I was in Tampa and this is going back maybe seven or eight years now. And it was a team building exercise. And the question that the presenter asked us very enthusiastically in this team building exercise was, how do you know if your tail lights out? And everybody in the room exclaiming how wonderful it is to have somebody help you. You got to rely on other people to get your, watch your six and make sure that they can pay attention and be on your side and have the same mentality to not fail to miss something that's important like that. And me being me from New Jersey, please don't hold it against me. I raised my hand and says, I don't think I want anybody else's help. I would put a brick on the brake pedal, get out and look for myself. Because I think it's important that we as players and coaches are able to pull ourselves out of the driver's seat and take a look at our vehicle from a different perspective. Let's take that 360 walk around the vehicle and decide, is my tail light out? Is there a scratch here? Does something need to be cleaned? Is the bumper off a little bit because that guy nudged me on the freeway? What are some of the things that I'm able to do to work to solve the problem of my own accord? Do your players immediately grab their phone and turn to Google to try to solve the answer? Do they go to their favorite Instagram model? Do they go to their TikTok coaches to try to find solutions to their problems? Making sure that you have a strong enough relationship with your player and a foundation in place with a pathway to say, I need to do the following things here in order to take this to a higher level and in order to solve those problems on my own accord without getting lost, without deviating. A prime example is uh, one of my favorite juniors here. And as you'll see, since this is coming from my Instagram page, it looked good when we left. We had done a lot of work to get the properly fit putter here make sure that we have an understanding of how we stand there and the setup pieces and boy, that looked good. But when you are that this age, you're probably not in the studio every single month, but you might be in here every couple of three months 
And in that interim, stuff might break. Maybe it starts going a little bit left as it did for this player. So we tried to come up with a solution on the left-hand side. And we said, okay, well, if I'm missing it left, then I just need to fix it. I need to stop it from going left. I'm going to try this grip here. And you can see how the movement patterns deteriorated. And we go, oh boy, that's not so great. We're standing on top of the golf ball. We've got the putter traveling in during the backswing and out during the forward stroke. We've got speed issues as occasionally that ball goes cruising six feet by. And it might not be because the size and tempo is off. Maybe we just aren't set up in a way to manage the size and tempo to create the speed. But your players are going to work with what they have and the information that they have to date here. So as we get into the ownership process, that takes a lot, but we want to make sure that we effectively solve problems with the good technique. We want to make sure that this player knows where to look when things start breaking. I think it's important that we recognize ownership comes from implementation of the create and development phases of this particular coaching process here. We need to come to an understanding of how and why things worked a little bit more extensively. We had to look under the hood here, talk about some higher level concepts. And despite being 11, we have a good understanding of radius, planes, and making sure that we know how the putter moves within those planes. What do I do with my body, my torso, my shoulders, my chest, my arms, in order to create that movement, as opposed to artificially trying to put a shape in place and make sure that, well, this is just how I'm gonna move. I'm gonna try to force the putter to travel on an arc or inside down the line or straight back, straight through making sure we're looking in the right place for the answers. And that's where the ownership side of things gets to be very extensive. And we wanna be very detailed in that department. So as we pull back here and we get out of that driver's seat, we look at the coaching process. We have create, develop and own. But in each of these areas, we need to recognize that it's not just a one and done, that this process continues to cycle with creating, developing, and owning in a given skill set at a given ability level. And then we go back to our putting tree and say, hey, we had to work on some speed components or read or direction as we go through this process here. And that creating an understanding of read comes next and developing the skills to be able to read greens effectively. And then the tactics that we're using to have ownership of that skill set. And then we might be some direction because we might hit it both directions a bit. We need to revisit that a little bit more carefully. In every single one of these areas, that process of creating, developing, and owning starts, ends, and then begins again multiple times. And I will say from the coaching side, I need to be able to recognize where am I? in this myriad of things that we could take a look at here. We have our second layer of the putting tree with key concepts, our bottom layers with influencers and stuff that I don't even list on the tree because for all you Top Gun fans, I call it below the flight deck. It's just too deep a dive for information for our juniors to really be aware of, appreciate and be able to implement. And that leaves us with our last part. What is the most important skill here? And I think that might be a discussion for a different day. But I think as you look at those three, you have to wonder which, which is at the center of the tree. Maybe speed's there for a reason. I don't know anybody that had a lot of three putts on any given day because their speed was good. But three putts don't come from hitting it seven feet right, seven feet left. It comes from hitting it too far, too short. Maybe we should start there for our junior golfers. And then decide later, is speed, in fact, the most important skill? Because remember, all three of these skills make the ball go in the hole. I'd be remiss if I didn't take a couple of seconds here at the end to just quickly bust some myths here for all you office space fans. We need to put T's in the ground for your stroke. Yes, please do not try to do it to solve a path issue. Use T's responsibly and effectively. I like using them to frame a given size of stroke and help players create awareness of size and tempo. Going back to that article that I was uh, fortunate enough to have featured in Golf Digest back in January and the full version of that on my website here. Then 
another myth about this whole putter being a pendulum and just rocking it back and forth with your shoulders. That's not how that works. Please don't tell that to players. Give them an information that is relevant because how they create that size of stroke and that tempo is going to influence their ability to execute that skill, create some ownership. I do not care what it looks like. I do care what it does. And then lastly, we can't be stubborn about this topic of putting and citing that it is just distance and direction. There's a prominent teacher in the area that put up a putting tip and ended it with a quip that said, and boom, you don't need a putting coach. I look at the stuff that we talked about today and the number of problems that we have fa are facing and need to solve and kind of scoff at that a little bit because we need to be better than that. We can't be stubborn on the issue that putting's easy but it can be at least organized if we start looking in the right places for the answers, not going to every TikTok and every Instagram page. And that way we can solve a problem, at least this one. I'm gonna take the floor open here because I believe I've timed a few questions left here at the end here. Josh, how do we do Fantastic, my friend? Fantastic, Preston. I love it. I love I loved, uh, when, when you threw the car up and I, I, I knew something was about to come and I was like, okay, where's he going to go with this one? So I like that. I like that. I, I, if I could just, can I pull the emergency brake and not use bricks? Is that fine as well though? Uh, I, I, that might work. I haven't, I haven't actually tried the e-brake here because not everybody <laughs> carries a brick around anyway. So yeah, let me ask you this. Um, um, and I'm, you know, I'm a, uh, Luckily for me, before before this started, if I if I was going to answer the question of which is the most important, the the speed. If just if you just hit the ball around the hole, think things are going to be okay. Do you have specific games, or do you have some games that that you could uh, tell tell coaches as to how they would gamify, make make fun the speed control process? I think as we start looking at speed aspect, everybody's always looked for give me a drill. And I think before we even get to that point, it's about making sure that the player has a good concept of what to do in order to change the given result, right? We might end up in a situation where my speed's bad, we'll go do your speed drills, but if they don't have the technique and if they're just behind the eight ball, like our first example of a very short, very fast stroke, we could be here all day doing drills and it might not change. So I will emphasize starting with the good foundational piece, then you can get into gamifying your ladders, your ladders, your different circles. On my Instagram a couple of days ago was a staggered ladder where you have ghost holes at different spots and the player has to work four holes going out and four holes coming back and stay within the distance parameters or set a scoring system to it. There's no right and wrong way to score stuff. If I've got juniors, I'll use big numbers like 10, 20, and 30 points if they're in that younger age demographic. As we get into some of our more advanced players, yeah, there are penalties for hitting the 10 foot putt four feet by. And it's like, yep, minus 10, thanks for playing, right? So we wanna make sure that it's uh, providing relevant challenge points for the player. No, I totally got you there. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Now, where are where are you? I just real quickly for you. You're all over the place. I've seen you. I've seen you jogging the map here pretty good. Do you have a, a set home, or are you all over? Uh, let's see the studio in uh, Goleta at uh, Twin Lakes Golf Course. And then uh, I'm in Florida for a little bit of time too, um, in the Orlando area. And then uh, opportunities to travel too. Uh, putting schools as the world gets back to a little bit more normal, definitely a big part of that that focuses on in, uh, getting players that foundation for speed and green reading in the first level school. And again, with everything I do, I think if I never see a player again, they should at least have the opportunity to say, it's better when I walk out the door. No, that's absolutely brilliant. Preston, that's tremendous. I really, really, I know your schedule, man. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I appreciate you taking the time to, to come on here. I'm um, just looking in the, in the thing to see if, if somebody pops in a putting question, I did not see one just jump in and I know we gotta, we gotta stay on it. So if I don't see something in a second, I am, I'm just going to say, thank you so much for participating with us. Uh, my head is spinning. I'm a, I'm a big, uh, putting guy, but been working on some putting programs. So I'm going to hit you up after this and, and test some theories out on you. That sounds, that sounds like a plan to me. I'm always open. Um, easiest way to find me um, on my Instagram account at Preston's Putting and the website, uh, prestonsputting.com. Uh, download the free ebook that's on there. Some A little bit more information as it pertains to the putting tree and highlighting what that most important skill is too for those interested. I think it's a different outlook on that topic and uh, those following through, I think will be surprised at what the answer might be. 
Preston, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you coming and joining us today. Much to everyone's chagrin, we do not have a trivia component uh, for this break. However, we will see you in five minutes. <laughs>